Good evening. Uh, we got a little bit warmer weather today. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, as you can see, uh, Pastor Frank is not here, but uh, I'm going to update you on his status. Uh, he sent me a text today. Uh, Okay, here it is. Water report. Fluid slowly coming off. My butt has has disappeared. <laughs> Leg still larger than should be, but fluid has, I think he says, been reduced in the knees. Knees bending easier, that, and that's a good thing. Haven't lost much yet around the middle. That's usually the last thing to go. Uh, feeling a tad better. I've been walking around the house more, standing more, trying to build up my strength. This is leaving me a little weak. So anyway, um, we're going to pray and uh, open with prayer. And we, we need to keep Pastor Frank in our prayers because he's, uh, he's been having a, a tough battle. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for all the blessings that you have given us today, Lord, one of which is the ability to come into your house tonight. We pray for our pastor that you will touch him and heal him and, and take away any discomfort that he may have. Thank you, Lord. We pray for our country that it will be headed in the right direction, but that's not a given, so we need to keep praying for our country and our leaders. Pray for our departed president and his family. Keep them safe. Keep them well. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all you folks out there in cyberspace, uh, welcome. And I uh, hope you get something out of this tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about wisdom. And uh, wisdom is something that we all need that we all would like to have. And my wife's sitting there pointing at me. Um, so uh, I guess uh, I guess it's a good thing I'm giving this message tonight because I'm the one that needs wisdom if you ask her. And I do, I mean, I'll admit it. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit my shortcomings. Wisdom is better than gold. It's a commodity that I need more of. The dictionary definition of wisdom, and I picked out three things here, it's the power of true and right discernment. The power of true and right discernment. Second thing, good practical judgment. Wow, we all make uh, bad decisions sometimes, and I'm probably toward the top of the list, but... Uh, we need, to, we need to use good practical judgment when we make decisions. And common sense. And Sandy's always telling me, eh, you may be smart, but you don't have much common sense. And I'm not going to argue because she's, I'm outnumbered. I mean, y'all would take her side. But, <laughs> but anyway... Uh, the, uh, the biblical concept of wisdom is different than the classic view. And please, if you all have something to say, I appreciate the, uh, the interchange last week. So if you have anything to say, you ladies, uh, don't be afraid to speak up. I'm, I'm, my wife is never afraid to speak up. So uh, please, please uh, add to the discussion. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, which was written by the Apostle Paul in about 55 or 56 A.D., I'm going to read that because that, that talks about wisdom. And again, you'll have to excuse me. My, my eyes are not what they, what they used to be. So It says, Christ, the power and wisdom of God. For me, message, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. 
but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written that I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disaster of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to those, preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wise, wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. The, uh, the first principle of biblical wisdom is that uh, people should humble themselves before God in, in reverence and worship and be obedient to his commands. And, you know, if, if some people call themselves Christians, but if they're not obedient, then they're kind of like a, a lukewarm Christian or they're maybe a halfway Christian. But we have to be obedient and, and reverence, pay reverence to God. Wisdom literature in the Bible is found in the books of Proverbs, Job, and Ecclesiastes. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff in Proverbs, and every morning I try to read a little bit of it because there's, there's some good stuff in there, and it, it makes sense. I mean, of course, it's in the Bible, so it, it should make sense. But, I mean, it's, it's everyday things that sometimes you don't think about. In the Old Testament, the best example of a wise man is King Solomon, who re reigned from 970 to 931 B.C. He was a model for all wise people who followed him. And I'm going to read uh, from Ecclesiastes here. We need a, we need better light here or something. I appreciate your patience. Patience is another commodity that I need. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1, 12 through 14. And I've got it outlined here. I need all the help I can get. The grief of wisdom, like the preacher, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I set my heart to seek, thank you, John. Yeah, it did, it did, to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. Solomon, uh, Solomon said, eat, drink, rejoice, do good, live joyfully, fear God, and keep his commandments. And there you go. When you say keep his commandments, that's obedience. Skepticism fades away when we view life as a daily gift from God. 
And you know, every day, every day I thank God for giving us this day because you just never know when your last day is going to uh, come. So we need to be thankful for each and every day he gives us regardless, regardless of some of the trials and tribulations that we may go through during that day. You know, Solomon was wise, but eventually he made some bad choices. He broke the laws that were established for the kings of Israel. He used his position to enrich himself at the expense of others. He even built altars to the pagan gods of his wife, wives. He had many wives. Now, there's many ways that you can get wisdom. One is through experience. If you have a bad experience and make a bad decision and do something wrong, hopefully you're going to learn from what you did wrong and not make the same mistake again. Uh, I think that I had a, a sixth grade teacher one time that uh, said of one of her students, it wasn't me, but she said, uh, he's a very good student. He doesn't make very many mistakes, but when he makes them, he makes them five or six times. <laughs> Another way you can gain wisdom is from the internet, but I don't, you can't always trust everything you say, you read on the internet and you hear on social media. You know, there's uh, our previous president, I think is the one that coined the expression fake news. And there's a lot of fake news out there and, and people will post that fake news on social media to either try and get you to do something that, that they would like to have done or to plant a seed of false information in your mind so that you will maybe not vote the way that you were going to vote or you were, you're going to make you do something else that you really didn't want to do. There's no shortage of grumpy cats, dancing babies, and fake news. Foolishness is glorified on social media. You know, you see all this stuff. Oh, isn't that cute? Foolishness is glorified on social media. Yet the world still longs for wisdom. Wisdom, Parenting tips, marriage advice, leadership principles, personal growth. Fancy words describe one thing, wisdom. And really, if you, if you don't have a lot of wisdom, you're going to struggle in this life. And if you don't do what you need to do to gain some wisdom, you're going to struggle in this life. The Bible says wisdom is more precious than rubies. That's in Proverbs 8, 11. And gold, Proverbs 16, 16. So are we willing to pay? Talk is cheap. Wisdom costs. Wisdom is only words if not applied. In other words, you can have all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't apply it in situations, then it's, it's not doing you any good. And by the way, I have to thank my crack research specialist here for getting me some material to, to talk about tonight. And she made, the, she made the letters big enough so that I can see them. And I, I wasn't going to say this, but, it, and I'm not trying to give you an excuse, but I, I've had macular degeneration for a few years and, and my eyesight just isn't what it used to be. So words become wisdom when they are internalized and the heart changes. And if you have wisdom and do the right thing, that can change your heart. That can change how you think. And that is a sacrifice that only a few people are prepared to make. Not everybody is willing to do the right thing. You know, it's, it's the, there's an old uh, adage, if it feels good, do it, you know, and gratification right now. And that's, that's what's wrong with our society. One of the things wrong with our society, instant gratification. I want it and I want it right now, you know. And if I can't have it, then... 
Sorry about that. If you desire wisdom as the principal things or require wisdom for a specific situation you face, these Bible verses and scripture quotes will set your feet on the path of wisdom. But those called to God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1.24 Jesus is the wisdom of God. If wisdom is what you need, you must start with him. You must start with him. Because, as I said before, you, you get a lot of wisdom out of this book. Not only in Proverbs, but in every book, you're going to learn something. That's why it's very important to stay in the word every day so that you will learn something and you will grow in your spiritual life. Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16 tells us we have the mind of Christ, so if you call on Jesus, he will give you his wisdom for your situation. To quote Rabbi Zacharias, outside of the cross of Jesus Christ, there is no hope in this world. That cross and resurrection at the core of the gospel is the only hope for humanity. Wherever you go, ask God for wisdom on how to get that gospel. Even though, even in the toughest situations of life, and that's Proverbs 3.15. Proverbs is really, really a great book, really. It's made me a little bit smarter. Maybe not smart enough, but a little bit smarter. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. So saith Proverbs 3.15. God appeared to Solomon and gave him the opportunity to ask for anything he desired. What did Solomon desire than all else? Wisdom. Not gold. Not silver. Not rubies. Not long life. Solomon asked for wisdom. Wisdom is paramount. It's great to be smart and have knowledge, but it is more valuable to have the wisdom to apply it appropriately. If you as aspire to anything in this life, I pray that you desire wisdom. Because if you, if you have wisdom and don't use it, what, what good is it to you? I mean... You're going to kind of stumble through life and you're going to find yourself in adverse situations more than you would like. And it's going to have a detrimental effect on your, on your life and certainly on your, on your walk with our Savior. Proverbs 4, 6 says, Don't turn your back on wisdom for she will protect you. Love her and she will, will guard you. You want protection for business deals, holiday plans, the school run? Ask for and apply wisdom. Wisdom will protect you and your family from motor accidents, shady business deals, and harmful relationships. And I think harmful relationships gets a lot of people in trouble because they don't look at the inward, uh, the inner workings of a person. They look at the outward appearance, and wow, he's really handsome or she's really beautiful. But if, when you spend some time with that person and you see maybe how they treat animals or how they treat other people or they're rude to a clerk in the store or something, then you got to use your wisdom and not, not just your eyes, you know, that where everything looks good. The Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you in all things. Heed his warnings and look for his peace. Philippians 4, 7. There's, a, there's kind of a, an old saying that will keep you from maybe getting into trouble. Uh, <clears throat> these two guys were, were arguing back and forth about uh, politics and one guy says to the other, he says, I don't like your attitude. 
I don't, you've got a bad attitude. I don't like your attitude. And the second guy says, well, if you don't like my attitude, quit talking to me. Go away, you know. And that will, that will resolve the situation. Proverbs 4, 6, if you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her, and she will honor you. Wisdom makes you great. According to society, greatness is achieved through hard work, the right connections, and or even a load of cash. I'd rather have wisdom, though. While such devices may achieve a certain level of greatness, true greatness takes wisdom. The wisdom not to give up, the wisdom to develop discipline. Discipline is very, very important because that helps you make good decisions. If you have good discipline, then chances are very good you're going to be making good decisions. The wisdom to ask others for help. Such behaviors are often not associated or thought of as wisdom, but are true wisdom in action. You know, I, I was talking a couple minutes ago about uh, about beauty, and you're just looking at the outward appearance of somebody. Uh, and there's a saying that sometimes a knight in shining armor, and ladies, this, I guess this applies to you more than it does to guys. Sometimes, sometimes a knight in shining armor is just a jerk in tinfoil. So, I mean, just... He may be good looking, may be tall, good looking, have money and everything, but he could just be a jerk in tinfoil. Proverbs 9, 11 and 12, wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. In other words, you make good decisions, use that wisdom to keep you out of bad situations, and that chances are very good that you're going to live longer. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you score wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. And that's in Proverbs 9, 11, and 12. With conflicting health information appearing daily, it's good to know that you don't need to rely on following the latest food fads for total wellness. Wisdom will adhere to advice of professionals Get a second opinion if necessary, and stand on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. Wisdom will not be swayed by Dr. Google or hearsay. Such wisdom will multiply your days. And the old saying is, beware of uh, false prophets. You got to you you gotta take what someone says to you with a grain of salt if they're telling you something that's way out in left field. For example, we heard that at uh, the inauguration today that, that there were going to be uh, agents come up on the stage and arrest Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and uh, Hunter Biden out in the, out in the uh, audience and other four crimes and, and other things that they've done. And there were other things involved that, th that was going to happen. Well, I, when I heard that, I said, that's not going to happen. They're not going to do that. They don't have warrants for them. If they tried to get a warrant, you better believe that there's somebody in the Justice Department where the warrant would come from that would leak the information. I mean, you can't keep a secret sometimes. The only way you can keep a secret is not tell anybody because once you tell somebody, if you have a secret and you tell your best friend or husband or wife or next door neighbor, it's no longer a secret. And it's and it's gonna be it's gonna be out it's gonna be out there. Proverbs nineteen eight to acquire wisdom is to love yourself. Wow. People who cherish understanding will prosper. In other words, if you have wisdom and apply it and make good decisions, chances are that can help you financially and will help you prosper. Acquire wisdom and you will prosper. 
Don't forget, prosperity is more than material wealth. It includes good relationships, thriving children, a happy, happy marriage, good physical health, and financial gain. You can only attain prosperity in every sense of the word when you apply wisdom. Wisdom will guide you toward a healthy life balance, which is the essence of prosperity. A healthy life balance. And you know, they say all things in moderation. You know, well, should I eat this second piece of pie? Uh, look, first one was awful good. All things in moderation. So use that wisdom. You know, am I a little bit overweight now or do I need this extra sugar or something? Use your wisdom to make a good and right decision. Proverbs 11:12 says pride leads to disgrace but with humility with humility comes wisdom. And how many times have we been in situations where we've done something wrong, we've no we knew we were doing something wrong, we made a bad decision and we got embarrassed, we got humbled. And instead of using that wisdom for our own good, we, we kind of stumble a little bit. And we all stumble. Nobody, nobody in this room or in this world is perfect. And I frequently tell Sandy, I'm not perfect, never have been, never will be. There's only one perfect person, and that's our loving God. It takes humility to submit yourself to the wisdom of of God above your own wisdom. And you see these bumper stickers on the back of cars, WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know, and sometimes, sometimes that'll make you think twice before you uh, get involved in a road rage incident or something with somebody that pulled in and cut you off like happened to us tonight when we were coming here. Some guy in a Mustang just there was just barely room to to clear between our car and the car ahead of us, and uh, the guy whipped right in there. He was he was in the uh, center lane. We were coming down 27, and he whipped in front of us so that he could make a uh, turn up here uh, by CVS. And uh, I didn't I didn't look at him. I didn't wave at him. And if I had, it would have been with all five fingers, you know, but uh, I just, you know, let him go. You know, there's nothing nothing gained by following the guy and, and having a confrontation that would probably get, I'd, I know I'd probably get the worst of it. So use your wisdom in situations like that. I mean, sometimes you got to just bite your tongue and, and let, let things go on. You can't be wise without being humble. By the same token, if you are humbled, if you are humble, you will find yourself unwittingly wise. And I, I consider myself a humble person. I am just so grateful for everything that God has done for me. You know, I've, I've lived a long life. It has not been peaches and cream. It never, will, never has been for anybody. We all go through, as I said earlier, trials and tribulations. But if you humble yourself before God, you find yourself unwittingly wise, you know. And I just give thanks every day for all the, all the good things that our Lord and Savior has done for us. Humility requires honesty. Honesty. Judge Nineen Pirro, who's on uh, TV, has a program on Fox. Uh, she comes on Saturday night, I think, at 9 o'clock, and then she's, uh, I think she has a Sunday program. I don't know. We don't, we don't watch it. We didn't even turn the TV on today. Didn't turn it on. I miss Judge Judy. I watch Judge Judy every day. She, she's one of my heroes. Sandy doesn't like her, but we didn't even turn it on to watch her, and there was a reason for that. But, but anyway, Judge Janine Pirro is sometimes a guest on some of these uh, some of these news programs and she wrote a book 
Church. She wrote a book, and the title of that book is Don't Lie to Me. And I got to tell you, folks, if there's anything that, that I dislike in this world, it's when somebody lies to me. Look you right in the face and tell you a big, bold lie. You know, that's happened, and it's going to continue to happen to all of us probably. As Thomas Jefferson said, honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. Honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. Be humble enough to honest, honestly recognize areas where you still have much to learn. And, I, and I'll and i admit that I still have a lot to learn. You know, I've been around a long time, but I still have a lot to learn. And I try to learn something new every day, something good that's going to benefit me and give me wisdom, and which will lead to prosperity and tranquility and all those good things that you like to have happen to you instead of the, the bad things. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people, and that's in Luke 2, 52. When it comes to wisdom, no one arrives. There is always more wisdom and more to learn. In other words, you can Sometimes you can know too much of the wrong things and you just got to kind of filter that, that garbage out and keep the good things up here that's going to benefit you that will help you to do the right thing, help you to tell the truth, help you to be honest, help you to help others and love everybody as we're commanded to do by our Lord and Savior. Remain teachable and, and be open to, to learn new things, and you will be wise. In other words, I, I, I'm not too old to learn. I've been out of school for a long, long time, long, long time. But I try to learn something new every day, and I, 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 I read a lot. I like to read. And sometimes I learn good things by reading, and sometimes I learn things that are maybe not so good. But if you stick to the Word and daily devotions and things that are biblically oriented, you're going to learn, and it's going to be good for you. It's going to help you. The wisdom of God was not beyond growing in wisdom. If Jesus grew in wisdom, surely we too can continue to mature in wisdom. And when we mature in wisdom, again, it's, it's going to help us. The, in, in the play, as you like it, William Shakespeare had a line that says, the fool doth, doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. In other words, be humble enough to know that you really know nothing and you reached the beginning of wisdom. Now, there's a, let's see if I can remember. Oh, there's a, there's a saying that I repeated the other day. I said, uh, and I used to collect these things, these witty sayings that have some value, you know, some truth to them. It is, and it goes like this. It is better to be silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. And that is so true. James 1.5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. The last few verses have demonstrated the link between wisdom and humility. It is again demonstrated here in the book of James by saying that if you need wisdom, ask. It's just that simple. And I ask for it every day, and I ask for other things too, patience and, and kindness and the ability to forgive. And, but I, I still fall short, and I'm, I admit it. You know, Humble yourself, ask for wisdom, have a teachable spirit, and God will give it to you. He is the ultimate source of wisdom right here in this book, right here in this book. Later in James, we have a definition of what wisdom looks like. Honor 
not selfish or jealous, truth, pure, peace-loving, gentle, merciful, and good. A life of biblical wisdom cannot be achieved without God. Ask and he will provide, not as the world does. And in Ephesians 1, verses 16 and 17, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Like Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus, I pray Christ will give you spiritual wisdom that you may grow in your faith, grow in your faith and knowledge of him. I pray your heart remains humble and teachable and that you will always look to Jesus as your wisdom. And in closing, wisdom comes from God and is necessary for preservation and creativity. Eternal life awaits his children who live by his wisdom and are obedient. And folks, I, you know, I, I point to myself as uh, somebody that, that, that needs improvement. I think we all need improvement. But if we stay in the word, we're obedient, then we're going to experience that eternal life. Thank you for coming tonight. And... Uh, Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point. And I have another favorite saying, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. So once it's out there, it's out there, whether you meant it or not. If you've said something hurtful, uh, it's out there, you know. And whoever, whoever you may have said it to or whatever action you may have done, they may not be able to forget that for a long, long time. And, you know, we're, we're told that, that we should forgive others. But sometimes, sometimes when your character is destroyed or you're, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to, uh, very difficult to forget. And it's sometimes it's very difficult to forgive, which we should do. So anyway, uh, does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add? Okay, go. Yeah, that that's very true. That's very true. Anybody else have any? Lee.
Yes, very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't even say a word, you know, when he did that because he, he, we've all seen on TV or read in the paper about road rage, road rage incidents where somebody has pulled a gun and, and shot the other person, killed them. You know, over what? Over something like that, you know, that you probably won't remember tomorrow. So, yeah, that's that's another element of wisdom. Anybody else? Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening, this midweek get-together. And, Lord, we continue to pray for healing and strengthening of our pastor. And pray blessing on all those who are watching at home and all those who took the time to come into your house tonight to, to hear this message. And, and hopefully, Lord, that we will all exercise wisdom, humility, and, and just do the right thing that is pleasing to you. Thank you for all that you do for us every day. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming.